Welcome to episode 57 of the High Volume Hiring Podcast. I am Stephen Rothberg, the founder of College Recruiter uh, Job Search Site. 57 is a great number. It happens to be how old I am. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect number. Well, and I'm Jeanette Leeds. I'm the uh, Managing Director, Executive Vice President at AMS, and I focus on our hourly and high volume solutions. And we are here today with Ava. I'm so excited and happy to have you here today. Um, she is the co-founder and CEO of a female-founded TA tech company, which I personally love 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 so so thrilled to have you here welcome um why don't we like just start off episode 57 with you know tell us just a little bit about you know your startup how it started the origin story i feel like that's always an interesting place to begin absolutely well first of all thank you so much for having me i'm such a big fan and so excited, Jeanette, to also connect with you afterwards and learn a little bit more about what you're doing in the space. It's really exciting. Uh, for Simba, um, full disclosure, we are Simba not for the Lion King. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, OK, the interview is over. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> but that's truly what we believe in, is creating a workforce where everyone is growing together and gaining value. And our origin story actually kind of begins with my own. I was a college student in Tucson, Arizona, very passionate about international relations, political science and economics. As you might imagine, none of the internships were in Tucson. They were in New York and DC, really inaccessible. And so I was very fortunate to do a remote internship at State Department and that paved the way, created a lot of access. And then fast forward a few years, I was fortunate to do a fellowship with late Congressman John Lewis in Atlanta and it's Black History Month, so it's a really special time. And that's kind of our motto. We're in the quest for good trouble. And that's what we're all about, creating accessibility, powering early career programs and um, shaping up a lot of our activities. Um, my co-founder is also a brilliant woman in tech and our CTO. That is so awesome. If, if, if any person can accomplish one one thousandth of what Lewis did, that's like a life well lived. Uh, 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 amazing, L love that. Um, I would before we started broadcasting, we were talking a little bit about this hashtag um, that you know open up the workforce. Um, tell tell us a little bit about that and and how that fits into what Simba's doing. Absolutely, and I am excited to get your take on to what it means to you because actually I have my own podcast and I bring on leaders to talk about what open up the workforce means to them and hmm. how they think about actually manifesting that in the work that they do, whether it be skills based hiring, um, creating opportunities from different talent pools, reskilling, upskilling. So for us, what that initially meant was there's just not enough learning on the job opportunities, right? In order to get your foot in the door to access some of these internships, some of them are more competitive than getting into Harvard. Um, and so my co-founder and I sat down with teams to ask them, why is it so competitive? Like, why can't you just create more? They said, well, let me tell you, we're using spreadsheets, all these different things to run a 12 or nine week initiative for this volume of candidates, there's no way we could do more. So we thought, how could we actually create a system to design that? And so for us, open up the workforce means creating more of those opportunities where you could actually have different pathways to economic opportunity and mobility long term. I love that. I love that. That makes so much that makes so much sense. And I think there's something interesting around the virtual aspect that like you said earlier around, you know, a virtual internship, because from an access standpoint, maybe you could just like, I don't dive into that a little bit more and how that that's working. Cause it's. Yes. So that's actually where we got started. Yeah. And let me tell you when we started back in 2017, 2018, they told us stop trying to make this happen. It'll never happen. <laughs> <happened. laughs> so, really so, and so that's why you created COVID. <laughs> to benefit the business model is that or do, do i have I mean, that yeah, not totally right way, but absolutely not i mean <laughs> definitely not even a joking matter but what we really really tried to do is at the time stand up and be a solution so we did hundreds of workshops for employers on how to run a remote program obviously at the end we slid in by simba but 
goal was for them to create these programs because over 50% of programs and internships were canceled. There was a team of like three engineers who open sourced this list of internships in real time that were being canceled. And I believe um, Microsoft made a post that we're canceling. And then I think in a few hours later, they put out apologies that, sorry, all the internships are still active again. <laughs> wow. Yeah, the the um, I think the word that we were using in in 2000 into 2021 was was adapting, mm -hmm. right? That 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 an internship that you were going to show up in person and you know work in a manufacturing facility or whatever it was going to be. Uh, well, that's probably a bad example because most of those jobs had to be in person. But an office kind of an internship, marketing, whatever that the companies had to learn how to adapt them. Um, so talk about pre-boarding. Um, with us, how how does pre-boarding differ from onboarding or is it part of onboarding? Um, because when I think of Simba, I'm thinking more the pre-boarding, but I suspect that you know Simba a little bit better than I do. <laughs> you better. <laughs> uh, I appreciate what you said earlier too about adaptability too. And, and Jenna, to go back to your question as well on the virtual aspect, if work is changing, how come we're not adapting what the early experience should look like, right? Mm. You need to learn the etiquette of working remotely or maybe even hybrid where you can't just knock on your manager's door to ask a quick question and you have to write a long email or you're like, is this a question I should know? Where, where do I go? I think it's really critical that we empower people with the resources um, that they need to do that. And so part of that is part of pre-boarding is that etiquette. What I, one thing I like to think about, and maybe both of you can kind of join me in this and our, all of our listeners, think back to your first ever corporate job. Mm. Got the offer, you're excited. Did you know what day one was going to be like? Like, do you just sit in that moment, the rush of the feelings, the excitement, like, what do I wear? Like, how do I act? Um, do I pack my lunch? Do, are we going out for lunch? Just all these questions. And especially imagine your first generation. Your parents haven't even worked in a corporate setting. So how do we really remove some of that anxiety by creating transparency and giving you access to things that we can give you access to, right? Why are we, you know, why is it a black box until you start at your company? We can demystify it, we can engage. And I think for Jeanette, your work in high volume hourly, this is um, compounded exponentially because folks who are applying for these hourly roles are applying to 20 plus roles at the same time. And if mm -hmm. someone's paying 10 cents more, well, then they're not working there anymore. So how are you getting them excited and invested in joining your company once they've said yes? And so I think that's really important as we think about how just all generations are really more fluid now. I think everyone thinks it's just Gen Z, but everybody's moving around a lot more. So I think it's really critical how we think about this for all segments of our workforce. So I want to hear Jeanette's First day, first professional job. Oh started. my goodness! First professional like after college, post grad. It was actually in an ad agency. So I started off as in an ad agency, and I'm trying to remember like what did I even wear? It was in, like New York City, and you know, I, I have no idea what, what I wear. I don't know if I brought lunch. I just but that excitement of like, ooh, you know, it was like a cool hit place. So I'm like, okay. So I don't, I don't remember. And then fast yeah. forward, like a couple of years later, I ended up doing campus recruiting on Wall Street, which was like night and day and sort of found my passion in recruiting and, and whatnot. But uh, I don't remember what that first day was like either, but uh, definitely wore a but, suit. <laughs> I, it's interesting. And, and, and I'll share mine if it's okay. Um, but I suspect, Jeanette, that your experience was probably like mine and probably like a lot of clients of Simba's and, and others, that people show up and they don't, most of what they should, most of what they would want to know, they don't know. You know, like again, are we going to go out for lunch, or should I bring a lunch? Right. Um, or is or is the culture work through lunch? So you know, you better have what something. <laughs> or do you wear do you wear what you wore to the interview, or were you grossly overdressed, grossly underdressed? You know, like all that kind of stuff. Like even just like where you go. So I remember um, I was in college, was working for an accounting company, doing like I was basically like a computer consultant. Mm -hmm. And I showed up at the office, the the accountant's office, the first day, and they were like, "Why are you here?" Oh, jeez. Oh my god. It's like, well, <laughs> what do you, bad. you know? I don't remember like the details, but I remember like, what do you mean? And like, I had like this sense of panic, like I didn't have a job, mm -hmm. and 
the partner in charge who I reported to was supposed to have told me, meet him at the client site. Because I was going to be, and I didn't even know it, but I can on site the whole summer at this one client site. So going into the accountant's office was like the stupidest place in the world for me to be. Wow. Um, so like they just, so it's like get in the car and like drive over there. I probably, I didn't get a speeding ticket, but I'm sure I was speeding. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. I'm mean, in a panic, Stephen, right? Like, like that doesn't feel good. And then yeah. it throws you off for the rest of the experience. And what you just shared is kind of like what we see is some of the biggest challenges from like pre-boarding to onboarding and getting set up. There's just so many people involved. It's like a game of hot potato and you're just hoping that they are, you know, still passing it all along, but you have no visibility. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. You mentioned a um, bit about and we were talking a bit about the generations, no matter what, whether it's Gen Z or when, and sort of the needs. What else are you learning about Gen Z? And by the way, I just, I have to throw this in. I just learned like last week, the next generation is called Generation Alpha or Gen Alpha, which is what, which I don't know. I clearly missed whatever about that. It's, my daughter is at the beginning of that. So lots of learning there. They're not yet working, but um, maybe talk to us a little bit about Gen Z. No. Absolutely. And I, you know, what you just said really resonates with me because every time we have someone who enters the workforce, there's all this uncertainty and like, oh my gosh, it's, yeah. Yeah. And it's like we've never experienced this before. And it's just like every time things happen in the market, it's like, oh my God, it's like these trends happen. We have, you know, new people enter. We have five generations in the workplace right now. And yeah. I feel like Gen Alpha will probably start working even earlier because I think that I, I did my first internship in college, but people are doing their, folks are doing their first internship in high school and are really savvy and very, very um, talented technically. I think what I've learned, learned a lot of things about Gen Z and I'm very impressed. I, what, some things I appreciate about them is how um, vocal they are and how mm. much they've called for transparency and we're actually seeing change happen, right? All of a sudden, all job listings had to have pay transparency. And then all of a sudden, all these comp employers had to have these difficult conversations on, oh, sorry, you were paying paid, you know, this much compared to the same person in, the, in your role um, based off of, you know, different factors. You know, I think it really stirred up very, very healthy conversations. So I appreciate that they're loud and vocal and they use their channels to communicate. I think that when we look at other generations, they didn't have access to information this readily available. And so when you don't have the inside scoop on everything, you kind of don't know that the grass might be greener on the other side or that you could be, um, you know, having that kind of experience. So I think it's really great that we can use some of these tools for good. And I'm excited for Jenna Alpha to make even more waves. Yeah, for sure. If my daughter is any example of Gen Alpha, I'm like, everyone better watch out. <laughs> so. Yeah, and I, my, my wife and I have three adult kids. The youngest is, is 20, well, almost 25. Um, so she's not in that alpha. She's, she's in the Gen Z, mm -hmm. but very much like what you're talking about is, is that they are far more likely to sort of speak up, which I think is fantastic. Because mm -hmm. as a manager, if you don't know that there's a problem, with 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 your employee they a sick relative or whatever it might be you can't fix it if you don't know that it exists um and what i see from them that's different from my generation is that we we perceive things as being a problem but we just sort of kept quiet because we felt like we had to accept it and this generation i think they have more choices it's like if you're going to treat me poorly i'm going to go work someplace else and 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 they're right they should Life is too short. So, um, well, we have reached the end of our time. Um, but Ava, this is fantastic. Um, for people who want to reach out to you, which I think is going to include Jeanette, um, how, how should they reach you? You can find me on LinkedIn. And I believe, Stephen, you're going to post the link. Um, and also check us out at Simba.io. But really appreciate the opportunity. Love this conversation. I only wish we had more time together. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much. To be continued. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you.